Hey everybody, AmpRepair.com, 203-892-4119. I've been working on this all day, so I'm going to do a quick video. I'll have a more thorough video when it's all done, which that time is coming very soon, I promise you. And yes, you will see this working. You will see it. This and the RF deck, you will make see it making watts, big watts. <laughs> okay, so, so anyway, high voltage fuse is wired, series glitch resistors are wired, filter cap. Filter caps are wired, the rectifier board, bleeder resistors, meter movement, all that, all set, wired. So, got the B negative coming over here, it's right here, and these are the reverse connected diodes. I also have some in the RF deck which end up being in parallel, so it's just overkill, overkill. So, remember the four conductor cords going to come in, one of those conductors will carry the B negative from the bottom to the top, and that connector will connect with this. The ring terminal with heat shrink over it, crimped and soldered. So I'll go right there and that'll get soldered also. So nothing can come loose or anything during shipping or at any point during its life. So the B positive will be hardwired in the RF deck. I'm going to have another standoff right here. And I'll have a wire going from this one over to that. And it'll have a stud so he can basically just bring the GTO wire in through the, you know, the insulated you know, hole that I'll have here, which, which you'll see, and it'll have a ring terminal, we'll just, you know, go over the stud and put the split washer and that, and it'll be all good. So, I don't trust those milling connectors or any of that stuff, so it'll be easier just to do that. Safer. Safer is the key word. Okay, so, got the series glitch resistors. Like I've explained before, they are 20 ohms, 300 watts each. So I have 40 ohms at 600 watts. Got the rectifier board, all the wiring, the secondary leads coming off the transformer, GTO wire, and they are clamped to the wall in two spots. I'll have the sticky pull down here, probably two of them, and zip tie that also, just so it's not moving around during shipping, or uh, it just looks nicer too. So, <laughs> But I'm not sure if it's gonna be on the 250 tap or 240 tap yet, so none of this is fully secured yet. I'm going to change the hardware anyway and use split lock washers underneath the nuts and that'll get snugged up real tight. So the four bleeders, the junction of them tied back to the filter caps that are in series so the voltage is equalized across each cap and these caps are isolated from ground. Again, I don't have to split washers underneath. So all these connections are crimped and soldered. And, um, you know, it's uh, silver plated stranded with Teflon dielectric wire connecting them to each other. I have tons, I have thousands of feet of Teflon wire, so I love using it. So, you know, people have said, why well, do you use Teflon wire, you know, but, and I use heavier gauge than I need. I mean, I don't really need that gauge, but the problem is if you use really thin wire and it's vibrating around during shipping, I've seen where it's snapped. So, so once again, also clamp to the wall back with proper clamps. I have like three or so five gallon buckets filled up with these new, new uh, these brand new clamps. So I use them, I love them. Okay, so you got the dropping resistors for the meter movement. I put, I, I, I don't know if the polarity is right. I might have to flip it after I bring it up on a variac because these meters aren't marked. I always do that anyway to make sure everything is uh, wired correctly. I've never had a problem, but I, you know, I, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So if it's backwards, I'll just, I'll just flip it. So if the meter movement were to go open, these diodes will stop the uh, resistors from being open, uh, which would allow the, the, you know, you'd end up with the full uh, B positive on the meter connection here. So that could be dangerous. So that stops that from happening. Once again, these aren't fully secured. I don't have the split lock washers behind the nuts. So everything's clamped and, uh, we're getting there. Also here, these are just snug. So, I am almost done. I'll take care of the filament leads going up to the RF deck next, and then I have to end the cathode return. I'll show all that, I'm not gonna get into that now. And then I need to mount the EBM PAPS blower underneath the solid aluminum, I think it's eighth inch piece that I bought for this cover, and cut that, mount it, and and then uh, cut the cover, the uh, bottom cover of the RF deck so the holes line up, and then we'll put that neoprene st stuff for the seal between the two, but 
getting ahead of myself. So stay tuned. I am getting there. I promise this will be done soon. You will see it work and then I will. Sorry about that. My memory card was full. So please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I will be back on this very soon and I will have this vacuumed out really well. So I'm getting there. Almost there. Stay tuned. AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119, 73.